Alright then, that was a brand new live track from the Queen of Metal herself, Rita Flood, live version of Relentless from her new live album, The Bitch Is Back Live, coming out on November 5th. And joining me now by phone, the Queen of Metal herself, once again here inside the asylum, Rita Flood. How are you, Rita? Thank you, Turbo. I'm doing great. Good, good, good. I'm doing to you. great. We just did a radio interview here in Los Angeles for a benefit that we're doing for MS. Um, so we popped in the morning radio and did the morning radio show here over at KLOS. That was a lot of fun. Awesome. Hey, that's a great yeah, choice. I have you on the line. Yes, now you've got me. So it's a good day for you. I'll support an MS. It's a good day. We yeah, just yeah. got our first copies of The Bitches Back. I'm looking at a stack of them right now. Great. So they are out. They're not out for the public, but they're they're ready to be set up and put out. And um, they're looking pretty badass. We got, uh, we got the fans' artwork that the fans had submitted. Um, all kinds of photographs for this album and we ended up using everybody except the front cover the front cover was shot by gene kirkland professional photographer and there's a poster inside that was shot by a fan there's a collage inside that was all these are all fan shots taken by little cell phone cameras and just amazing stuff Awesome. Yeah, that, um, yeah, that was some kind of. It's dedicated to the fans. So when you take the CD out, you'll see the dedication that I wrote myself and the date it was recorded. Yeah, that's awesome. That was something I wanted to ask you about. How did you guys decide that that was the route that you wanted to go? That you wanted to have the fan interaction for the photos to go with this album? Well, what happened was we came off the Def Leppard Poison Tour, and um, we just thought, you know what, let's just, let's just throw together a live album, and uh, let's make it so we record it all in one show. We didn't go around touring different places and recording the best pieces of every show. We thought, you know what, let's just record one album, and, and uh, it is what it is. And that way, the, the listeners will feel like they're the, really there, like they're at a, at a Lita Ford concert. And um, it, it's, it's intimate, and uh, it's real, and that's the way a live album should be. Well, you know, definitely. Some of the best live albums are, are recorded just for the moment stuff, where you don't go in and overdub you know, your vocals or or you don't have any backing tracks when you actually record it. I mean, this is just raw, live us. <laughs> it, it definitely sounds that I've had it for uh, about a week now. I, I debuted one of the tracks from it uh, last week, and uh, I've been really getting into it. It does have, you know, that real live feel. I even find myself, you know, wanting to look at the, um, the booklet. Yeah, I didn't find myself wanting to to sit and go, all right, where was what song recorded, and was it in a different area with a different sound guy? It, it sounds like it's all one show, and that, I think, is something that a lot of bands have gotten away from, and it's kind of refreshing to hear that you decided to go with that old-school vibe of a live album. Yeah, it's... it's um it's intimate. <laughs> well, that's, that's it's, good. It's hard, Turbo, it's hard to hear you. I'm sorry if I don't answer your questions correctly. That's all right. Never never worry about that. Uh, but, you know, it, it is very intimate. You can hear it. You can hear the interaction on the album between you and the audience that night. Um, I wanted to know, was there anything special about the venue that you chose to do the, this live album at, uh, this one being done at the Canyon Club in uh, Agora Hills, 
California. Oh, no, the only reason we did that is because it was uh, close to home. It was accessible. It was easy to record out of. We had no problems with the club. You know, some of these places, they don't want you to record out of their, out of their place. Or if you do, you know, you got to pay them an arm and a leg. And it's, it's, it doesn't really matter where you record. It's just so long as you've got your fans there. And we wanted an intimate location. So you're not miking the room in a large arena. Um, you're able to contain the sound better in a smaller club and uh, that's why we picked one reason why we picked the Canyon Club plus our engineer lives around the corner and we've got all of our uh, musicians that live here so it, it was just easier yeah that, that makes that, that makes a lot of sense I mean I know for some artists it, it's they, they go back to the venue that maybe where they broke or they go back to a venue that they had a really good experience with. But in a way, it's kind of nice that you did it where it was close to home. Uh, not only so that it was a more energetic show for you and for the band and for the crew, but even for some of the fans that are from your, your hometown area. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I am their artist, you know? I, I represent Hollywood, and uh, it, it shows on the live album, and it shows on, on Living Like a Runaway. Yeah, I mean, it definitely does on both. Both, I mean, the, the live album, I'm sure it's going to do very well on, on all the charts. Living like, like a Runaway took off and did amazingly well. And what I find interesting is the title of the live album is The Bitches Back Live, and that was later released as a bonus to uh, Living Like a Runaway. What made you go with that as your opener for the shows and the name of the album? Um, well... It was released as a bonus track because it was just one of the variations that we had and different formats we had of releasing Living Like a Runaway. It, it was a bonus track if you wanted to only buy 10 songs. I think it was 10 or 11. I can't remember the number. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, if you chose to buy the bonus tracks, you would have got two extra songs. And the only reason we did use it as a bonus track is because it, it's an Elton John cover song, whereas everything else on the record I wrote. Right. So uh, it became, a, a, except for the Nikki Six song. Right. And um, I, uh, I just put it, I don't know, it just ended up, it, we didn't know, it was like, like Russian roulette, you know, we, we just, or blackjack, we just spun the wheel, and wherever the little ball landed, we just took that song out and said, okay, you're going to be the bonus track, because the album is so strong, and there's so many good songs on it, that it didn't really matter any way you shuffle it, and any way it lands, it still turns out great. So we just said, you know what? Let's just take this one and this one. <laughs> no special reason. But uh, The Bitch Is Back started to become our first song, and we used it live first. It was the one that made the most sense. The Bitch Is Back. It's a great, perfect opener for a set. And uh, it also is a statement. I, I'm back. I'm back from my long hiatus. Yeah, I mean, so that, I, yeah. It's that, appropriate. Yeah, very appropriate. I mean, I, I don't know if I would consider you uh, a bitch. I mean, I've spoken, this is the second time we've spoken, um, and a lot of interviews I've seen. I, I wouldn't say bitch is the the appropriate word for you because you're like the opposite of what anyone would define as a bitch in, in all honesty. 
Um, but it is a very strong album title and in a way it does do exactly like you said, kind of remind everyone that the, the badass leader that everyone knows and loves from, from, you know, from the 80s is still around and still as badass as ever. <laughs> Well, first of all, bitch is just a ter- an endearing terminology that, that I use and that, uh, you know, we use. It, it's just, it's meant to be endearing and, uh, n- you know, not nasty. <laughs> and um, I think a lot of people get a kick out of it, actually. Oh, for sure. I mean, it, it definitely is uh, an attention grabber and... Uh, I definitely could see a few people going, yeah, you know what? I mean, I could see that even becoming a, uh, you know, like a- an anthem for so many women uh, of power, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, and I'm sitting, I'm looking at the the, the lineup of, of songs that you chose uh, to do live, and I'm wondering, is this a different set list from what you did when you went out on the road with Def Leppard and Poison, or is this the same set list from when you did that tour? Uh, this was right after the tour, actually. This was, this was like a week after we finished that tour, we recorded this. Oh, wow, you didn't waste any time. No, we just jumped right in, uh, right off the tour and, and recorded. But we waited to release it. What was the, the the reasoning behind waiting for the release? Did you kind of want to let some hype, you know, build back up? Or did you just feel like it was too soon to release right after you guys had gotten off the road? Uh, it was too soon. We were still working on Living Like a Runaway, the CD, mm-hmm. and uh, then we had released Mother, the video. Great video. And, um, it just didn't fall into place until now. Um, and, and then now after this, we have a, a Christmas single coming out. Really? Which rocks. Totally oh. rocks. And it's a duet with me and Cherie Curry. Oh, wow. It's not a remake. It's an original song that we wrote. Nice. And uh, it's, it's rocking. So that'll be out for December. Very cool. Now, are you allowed to give me the title? Or do I, must we wait for release to, to find out what the, the single is, is called? It's called Rock This Christmas Down. I like that. I like that title. And it's a song about wanting musical instruments for your Christmas presents and being with old friends and family. That is awesome. I'm anxious to hear it. And, uh, it'll definitely make its way into my, my Christmas show my holiday theme show that I do every year. And you oh, say, cool, cool. Well, you, you're going to definitely want to hear this. Uh, I'm excited. I it's can't wait to... Ass, Turbo. You're going to love it. Yeah, I'm excited to hear it. And I'm also interested... This is... Is this the first time um, that you and Sherry have worked together since the Runaways, or have you guys dabbled in between? No, we haven't seen each other since the Runaways broke up. Oh, so this was a first time for on working together reunion. Yeah, no, it's just me and Cherie, though. Okay, right. That was the first time that you and Cherie got together to work on something since the Runaways. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so I, I got to ask how... What was that like after all these years, you know, getting back together and in for music? Oh, it was hysterical. We had a blast. Um, Sheree flew in from Chicago. She had just done a, uh, a show. And uh, I said to her, 
come to the studio. And um, she said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm recording a Christmas single. I said, why don't you come to the studio and sing on it? So she flew straight from the airport, from Chicago to, to the airport, landed, and came straight to the studio and cut, uh, cut the vocal track. So we did, it ended up being a duet between me and her. And it rocked this Christmas down. It's awesome. It's like the, take me back to South Tallahassee. <laughs> down around the corner to my sweet sassafrasa. And then it goes into this like a, like a real pretty Christmas. Rock this Christmas down. And we, we alternate lines and there's big vocal harmonies and bells and and it goes back into this rocking part about give me a new Les Paul and a big bass drum. <laughs> Pretty cool. Oh, that, that, that sounds amazingly cool. And I love how it was a, you know, it was just a, you know what, come on down and join me on this, on this track. I, I mean, that's really the way I'm sure a lot of the fun element came into it. It wasn't like, you know, you guys have been writing back and forth saying, all right, we're going to plan to record on this date. You know, I think, that maybe, you know, the fact that it kind of just happened probably added to all the fun that you, you two had uh, putting it together. I think I think I have angels watching over me, Turbo. Oh, of course. I, I really do. I think everything has been placed for a reason, and I didn't do it. It just happens. That that's just it's awesome. Wild. It is. It is very wild. I mean, you never know. Uh, look, I'm a believer in the universe working in weird ways for the right reasons. And I think that is definitely something that has definitely worked for you. The universe has definitely put things in place for you now after after all these years. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's just, uh, I'm just sitting back watching it happen. I know what you mean. Definitely. Just so, let's we'll see what, what the future holds. I have no idea. You know, I know... Uh, I don't think there's going to be a Runaways reunion or anything like that, mm -hmm. unfortunately. I, what have, have you thought about, uh, or is it too soon to think about a follow-up to Living Like a Runaway? I'm sorry, say that again? Is, is it too soon, or have you already begun thinking about writing the next album, the follow-up? album to living like a runaway oh i've been i've been uh writing as we've been going along i've got a got a concept in mind for the next album which i think is kick-ass and uh i've been talking to gary hoey and um just my songwriting lyricist michael dan and we we've got three songs written for the next album and 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 a really cool concept in mind for the next album. Very cool. It, it, it's interesting that you say um, concept. By, now, by concept, do you mean concept album or just overall concept of what you want the album to sound and feel like? Uh, it would be both. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's both. Okay. That, that's a lot. I mean, if you can get that, if you can get that far, then you should be well on your way. Oh, absolutely. Know? Absolutely. I know. I, I asked because I know a lot of artists kind of are, are hesitant to try a, a concept album because sometimes those are a, a hit or miss type of album. So that's why I asked whether it was an overall concept or just a, a general kind of concept. Right. No, I know what you mean. I, I know what you mean. Sometimes I just leave it in the hands of the angels and whatever they bring me, they bring me. Oh, awesome. <laughs> well, I know... It, any sense. The, it, it does. No, it does. And I tell you, they brought you a lot of uh, great luck living like a runaway and 
I know that the bitch is back live is going to be as much a success as living like a runaway was because it does it, it does do what you said it, it is. It is a live album in the truest sense of the word. Cool. Well, I appreciate you saying that. That means a lot. I'm, I'm so glad because you're one of the first people that have given me any feedback on this record since it's so new. I haven't really heard from anybody and what they think about it. Really? It's good to know. Well, I I'm, I'm feel I'm honored and uh, at the same time surprised that I'm one of the first uh, that you've heard from. <laughs> But I, yeah, I did. I, I did listen to it uh, prior to speaking with you, and yeah, it gives me that. I mean, I'm I'm still a young, I'm a youngin. I'm only 33, but one of the first albums uh, I ever listened to was Kiss Alive, and I know that 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 was a doctored um, live album. But when I listened to the Bitches Back Live. It gave me that live feel. I didn't feel like it was a a studio produced live album. It does sound like you're there at the show. Cool. That's exactly what I wanted. I mean, that's that's what a live album should do. Oh, absolutely. I think people that piece cut it up and piece it together are. Uh, they're just destroying the record by doing that. They're just taking that away. So, I don't know. That's just my personal opinion, but... Lita, I thank you for taking the time out to do, to do this with me tonight, and I, I greatly appreciate it. I wish you all the luck in the world with The Bitch is Back Live. Everyone go get your copy of it. It comes out on November 5th, and I anxiously... Yeah. Look forward to hearing your Christmas song with Sherry Curry later on this year. Yes. All right. Yes, very excited for it. I'm excited to hear it. And before I let you go, Lita, why don't you give me another song from your new live album that I should play here from my listeners of the asylum? Ah, Living Like a Runaway. You got it great one from the queen of metal herself this is a live version of living like a runaway right now inside the asylum <laughs> <laughs> 